Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. In the last video, I ran through the cam on how to use the blend command, and then I created a blend toolpath and compared it to a scallop toolpath. So today we're gonna take the stock, we're gonna put it in the M-Lock vise, we're gonna fire up the Sile X7, and we're gonna run the toolpath and see how that goes. So let's take a look. I'm not exactly sure what the results are gonna be, but we'll find out very soon. Let's see what it looks like.
came outside, I thought I would try to get some better uh, shots of the surface finish on this part. A little difficult to do, so I'm on the iPhone right now. Uh, seems to be better than the GoPro. So let's look at the scallop toolpath on the left first. So the first thing you're going to notice is right across here, that's some of those uh, lead-in marks that I was talking about. So I'll put up on the screen, uh, try to highlight the area that I mean. You can also see the seam line here. So we can see the seam line coming up. I'm pretty sure that's what I'm, yeah, and the seam line right there. So we got a seam line coming right down there. And if we come over here and look at this side, maybe this will show up, maybe not. Might have to rotate this around a little bit. We can also, there it is. You can see the seam line right there and the seam line right there on that toolpath. But for the most part, uh, this scallop toolpath looks okay, but you can definitely see some of the artifacts of the tool going across. Let's move over and look at the blend toolpath. Let me get this set back up again, a little bit better way. So the blend toolpath, if I can get this to cooperate, I'm trying to use a Roku remote to get this balanced up on. The blend tool path looks decent. Now remember, this is at double the step over as the scallop tool path. I do see some areas. <clears throat> I don't know if I love this ball mill that I'm using. I'm gonna try uh, doing some more surfacing with a different ball mill. Kind of, kind of looks a little chattering places. Um, I see some kind of uh, chattery type marks here and here. I'll put up a graphic on that. I want to just kind of compare showing the points and you can see where the points are really dense. We kind of see that's where the, the move changes are happening. Um, and you can see those black spots sort of correspond to the, uh, the areas that don't look quite as smooth. The other thing that you might note right here is there is, you can see this one line kind of going across. And again, I'll see if I can put up an image inside a fusion of what I'm highlighting here and you can see that one tool path so I'll definitely be uh, chatting with development about that a little bit to see if they can tell me what's going on and maybe you want to look into it more uh, the the tool the the finishing contour tool path that are on the outside sorry trying to get this focus in really happy with the quality of that um, I'm also trying to work on my feeds and speeds for the facing toolpath. It's a little bit more swirly than I would like, um, so I'll keep on dialing that in, but I think I can get that pretty darn nice if I get enough chances to kind of keep practicing on it. So anyway, there is the machine results of scallop on the left versus blend on the right. Uh, wasn't quite as significant as I thought it might be, but you can definitely see some of the artifacts of each one of these toolpaths. And uh, so hopefully you guys found that helpful. Uh, hopefully showed you how to use blend a little bit better. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And as always, thanks for watching.